Hey everyone, welcome back. Houston Math Prep here for our first example on trig substitution with secant. Here we have the integral of dx over the square root of x squared minus 64. If we had an x term out here or something slightly different, it might just be a definition. But in this case, it's not really a definition that we can just use. So we want to identify this variable squared expression minus constant expression as a u squared minus a squared. And so in this instance, when we have u squared minus a squared, we have our substitution be u equal to a times secant of theta to give us what we need for a Pythagorean identity. So in this instance, um, a is going to be 8 here, and u is going to be x. So if we substitute, that will tell us that x is equal to 8 times secant theta will be our substitution. We'll also need a substitution for dx, and so that will give us the derivative, which would be 8 secant theta tan theta d theta. All right, using my substitution x equals 8 secant theta, I want to start to develop my right triangle. I'm going to go ahead and divide both sides by 8 here so I can get a nice idea of where to put things in my triangle. Secant theta would be x over 8. And if you remember, secant theta is the hypotenuse over the adjacent. It's the reciprocal of cosine, which is adjacent over hypotenuse. So the x is my hypotenuse in this case, and 8 is adjacent to my angle theta. And if I want to figure out this other side, then this thing squared plus this thing squared would give me this thing squared. And this one ends up being the square root of x squared minus 64. And we'll use all of that to then substitute in terms of thetas. So we'll have the integral of dx, which is 8 secant theta tan theta d theta. So we'll write all that down on top. And then on the bottom, we will have the square root of x squared, now x is 8 secant theta, so x squared would be 64 secant squared theta minus the 64 that we already have. And what you're supposed to see here is that this is a constant multiple of the Pythagorean identity that we were looking for. So I'll bump my 8 out front from the top, leave my secant theta tan theta d theta in there, and then if we think about factoring out a 64, we get exactly a Pythagorean identity, secant squared theta minus 1. We'll factor out the square root of 64, which is an 8, so the 8 will reduce with the 8 that we get from the root down below, and we will simply get the integral of secant theta tan theta d theta over the square root of, now this identity secant squared theta minus 1, we're going to go ahead and change that into a single term and call it tan squared theta. And now because we are in a right triangle, we don't have to worry about any sort of negatives under there, so the root and the square will just reduce. We will get the antiderivative of secant theta tan theta d theta over tan theta. And of course, our tangents will then reduce, right? So we will, those reduce to 1, and we will get simply the antiderivative of secant theta d theta. All right, the definition for that is ln of secant theta plus tan theta. And now we just simply need to replace our secant and our tangent terms back in terms of x. Um, you'll notice right away our original substitution that we had up here, secant theta is equal to x over 8. So this one here is actually just going to be x over 8. And then tangent of theta, that's going to be the opposite over the adjacent. So this one here is going to be the root over the 8. So that will be the square root of x squared minus 64 over 8. Since they're both over 8, I'm going to go ahead and write it all as one fraction when I write this for our final answer. So we'll say ln of x plus the square root of x squared minus 64 
all over 8 plus c. Okay, that's our first example video for secant trig substitution. We've got two more coming at you. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one.